talking, the Lord spoke with me in the night. I called the radio. I said, now watch out. He's bringing more birth pain, the beginning of birth pain. We recorded it, aired it live. But in about four hours it took place. You see that? And it hit almost the whole of Europe because it hit from Greece up to southern Italy. You see that? And then the floods I spoke on that very day. Look at now what's happening now in the U.S. And yesterday he spoke again of increase. He took me into their houses in the spirit. And I was in the houses and it was raining on us. So much rain was entering with wind. So people were being removed from their, where they are. People were being removed. They were being removed from their houses. Being thrown out. You see that? Get out, get out, evacuated by force. You see that? Because of tremendous floods. And now I hear today that the Mississippi River has exploded out. It has crossed the banks and is now coming like a falls into the cities. You know? These are the beginning of birth pains. Verse 8. And you can sense, you can look there and see the urgency with which God is operating right now. He's operating very urgently. Which means his time frame is limited. You see that? But as he talks about the beginning of birth pain, the war coming to Iran. I was talking about that war. We published it in the Rapture Magazine 2006 in Tanzania, actually, in Bear. Bear on, in October 2005. That's the first time the Lord spoke with me about the two missiles coming to hit the nuclear facility in Iran. Bear, the border town with, uh, with Zambia. At the repentance meetings we had there. And so, now look at that. That war, we are, the earth is sitting very close to that war. We published it in 2006. But now I hear the Israeli Air Force is training. You see? And that war coming to Iran, is, Iran will take place. He said, these are the beginning of birth pains. You see that? Because his disciples had asked him, Lord, when will the end come? How will we know that the end is coming? Hmm? How will we know that your return is near? And he mentioned these things. And he said, these are the beginning of birth pains. You know? Remember, the beginning of birth pains. And then, verse 9, he says, Matthew 24, verse 9, he says, after the beginning of birth pains, he says, then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. Hallelujah. How do you jump from the beginning of birth pains and then now he's talking about then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. That means between verse 8 of Matthew 24 and verse 9 of Matthew 24 is hidden the rapture. That is what is hidden there. Again, between Matthew 24 verse 8, the beginning of birth pains, and then finally he has just thrown them into the birth pain. Something has happened there. The birth pain is the tribulation. And that's why when you look back at Revelation chapter 16 verse 15, it says, Behold, I come like a thief. Like a thief. Secretive. You know? And blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with himself that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. You see that? It is, there is something secret about his coming on the rapture. And that is the door to the rapture. Hallelujah. And he says here that many will come and claim I am the Christ. Deceive. You understand? And then he goes down there and says be careful. Make sure you are not deceived. Which means deception will be one of the greatest spiritual landmarks of the time. There will be a lot of deception. And where? In the church. Hallelujah. Deception will enter the church. That's what it, that is the message really that is there. That's what he's trying to emphasize. He's saying, 
there will be a lot of lies in the church. Many will come and say, I'm the Christ. Many will come, and, and then he says, make sure you are not deceived. He was raising a red flag. One of the key landmarks would be the great deception that will enter the church. In other words, the Lord is talking about apostasy. The falling away from true faith. Hallelujah. And that means there will be a big wave of false prophets that would enter the church. And how will you know that they are false prophets? Kenya now is a, little, is a bit more mature than other nations because the Lord has been speaking this for some time here. We've said very openly that there is no way someone is going to say he's a prophet of God called of the Lord God. Hallelujah. And remember, it's only he that calls his prophets, right? And tell you, look, I came from the Samuel school of prophets. I was there for five years, now I'm a prophet. Isn't that blasphemy? They taught me to speak certain words, thus saith the Lord. You see the big deception that entered the church? It entered the priesthood first. Only the Lord God himself calls his prophets. Hallelujah. And he calls them to serve Christ. And now you know that there is no way someone will come and say he's a prophet. Except that he comes and rebukes sin. There is no way he can be comfortable with sin if God speaks with him. You understand? At first I asked the Lord, why are you always showing me only bad things in the church? Hmm? Until later I understood. He, that is what he was sending me to address. There is no way God is going to be comfortable with sin. Every time he sends forth a word, he has seen something that needs correction. There is no way God is going to send a servant who is going to build his own kingdom. To lead people to himself. Every day in, day out, he's always going to point at the coming Messiah. The Lord says, make sure you're not deceived. Only this truth can ensure that they are not deceived. You see that? There is no way God is ever going to send a prophet that is not going to champion the holiness of the Lord in the church. That is common knowledge. Because the prophet is going to be the mirror image, the messenger of God. You see that? And God is holy. He's separated from sin. They have come as prophets. They have slept with women in hotel rooms in Kenya here. The women came to me for prayers. And the pastor took me to serve him in the hotel room. They come to preach. Then he's preaching about his shoes. Remember? Do you know how expensive my shoes are? Hmm? Do you know where I bought this suit from? Look at my wife. Do you know how much it cost me per month to keep that hair? The truth will have to set the church free right now. You understand? Let me tell you, this is the moment of truth. Only the truth will keep you from what Jesus... It's, my Bible is written in red. These are the words of Christ, the boss. Christ the King, the Honorable Lord. You see that? He says, make sure you're not deceived. But in between verse 8 and 9 of Matthew 24 is hidden the rapture. Because that means the birth pain you are seeing, the floods you are seeing, the earthquakes you are seeing, that means uh, the famine, the global famine that you are seeing, these are the beginnings of that pain. And look at the way he's increasing it. After I prophesy, it happens quickly. And then tomorrow night he comes say again another one. Say to them. Say to them another one. There is a sense of urgency here. Right? That's the first thing you pick from there. You begin to understand that God has shifted gears, moving faster. But I'm so surprised the nations are not aware. Listen to me, precious people. <laughs> 